Hello everybody, it's Gary from Garrett Outdoors. Today I'm back over at my father-in-law's and uh, doing a little bit of target practice. You know, I was thinking the other day, this is going to be a little bit of a story, but I was thinking about end of the world and SHTF and world without rule of law. And I was thinking specifically about food stores and what that's going to be like, you know. That's one of the most important things, you know, uh, finding food and water, being able to maintain that for you and your family in a bad apocalyptic situation. It'd be tough. So I was thinking about that, and I'm thinking about, well, you know, the more food you have stored, the better. But in a truly apocalyptic situation, a world without rule of law, uh, the supply chains, food, and all that's going to be a mess, at least for a while. Got a little bug on me. The food situation is going to be a mess for a while. So, <clears throat> you're not going to want to sit there and just eat away your food supplies just as quickly as you can eat them. You know, realistically, it would be next to impossible to go out and gather and hunt and continuously be bringing home enough food to sustain yourself and your family. That's going to be really tough to do. Basically impossible, especially if everybody else is doing it too. So, ideally what you would want to do is you would want to be using your food reserves as necessary, but also going out foraging for wild edibles, fishing, you know, and then hunting. And that way, you're not blowing through your food stores super quick. I mean, you can have, uh, you know, a year, a year supply of food, let's say. But if you're hunting and gathering and fishing and all that. Maybe you can push that to two years, maybe longer. You, you know, it's impossible to say now. Every situation's different. <sighs> but then, when you get to hunting, the reality is that, you know, you're going to go out hunting, and I think some people have the impression that it's going to be like the Oregon Trail. Every time you step a foot into the woods, you're going to see some big deer or elk or something. You're going to take it down and it's going to be a feast. And it's truly, it's not going to be like that. Not at all. It's going to be hard to hunt for food. And big game is going to be practically impossible. Even for very experienced hunters, finding big game is going to be next to impossible. I mean, if, if the United States lost its food supply... It's food chain, and people tried to go out and hunt and stuff like that. You're going to have every hunter in the woods. It's not going to be a season. It's just going to be life is always open season. And uh, you'd find a lot of animals and a lot of creatures getting their, their populations devastated. Maybe some even extinct, you know? So the reality is that nine times out of ten you're going hunting, probably more like 99 times out of 100, you're not going to be going after elk or deer or bear or buffalo or whatever, right? Turkeys. You're going to be going after things like squirrels, rabbits, small birds. And that leads me to my next point. So I was thinking about this and I'm like, you know, I make it to the range and I practice at the range with my real firearms more often, way more often, than I do with uh, BB or pellet guns. Now, I have two BB guns, pellet guns, and I got a little one and I got a big one. And the big one's got a scope. That thing will take down groundhogs, um, Cats. Not that. <laughs> not that I would know or anything, but it could do it. Um, that thing will take down some some decent animals. That thing's a beast. 
But my small one, eh, not so much. I don't think I could even, uh, I don't even think it would take a rabbit, to be honest. It might take a squirrel. In fact, I feel pretty confident that I could take a squirrel. But my small one is this one right here. It's the Buck Daisy little air-powered BB gun. So, like I said, I'm over here at my father-in-law's doing a little practice, doing a little uh, target, target practice, a little target shooting. This thing's fun to plink around with too. I'm surprised I don't do this more often. Now, I do want to get out here with the bigger one. Uh, it has a scope, and it needs zeroed in. But I have some fun with this one anyways. I'm going to show you some of my footage of my uh, activities here. There they are. In their natural habitat. All right, let me see if I can get one here. Ah, I got him. Try another one. Try the one laying down. Got him. Let's well, see that guy off in the distance there, standing up. That bigger can. Let's see if we can get him. No, I missed him. Let's try again. Got him. I wonder. <laughs> that was super zoomed in. I wonder how much the wind plays with a BB. I wonder what the velocity of a BB is coming out of one of these. I don't even know. I know my other one. It's pretty fast. This little thing, it's funny holding it in here. It's a little itty bitty. I feel like a kid again playing cops and robbers or something. Got him. Let's set up some distance shots here. I want to see how far I can get with this thing. Alright, as you can see, there's our targets. And let's zoom out. Hopefully you guys can get a sense for how far this is. You know what? I will actually just walk it out. All right, so I paced it out 20 steps. I'm gonna say my stride is about three feet. So we're gonna approximate, I'm gonna say it's conservative actually, but uh, we're gonna say that's 60 feet from where I'll be to where my targets are. Let's see if this little thing can do it. I was looking at those cans too when I went over there and set them up. These BBs are going through the cans. So I'm gonna say that with the right shot in the right spot, it's potential for taking down small, say, squirrels is there with this one. I don't know, rabbits, rabbits might be a little bit of a stretch, but I'm going to say I can get squirrels with this. Obviously, in a grid down, end of the world situation. I'm not going to try it otherwise. All right. Let's give it a shot. Make sure I'm in shot. All right. Try to get here so you guys can see me. I heard it. He got close. I'm gonna aim a little bit high. Maybe I'm getting too much drop over the distance. We're gonna keep going until I get a hit. We're getting close. Got it. Got 
got it. Not doing so good. I'm missing it by like the slightest little margin. I can see it going through the air. We're gonna get it. Haha, <laughs> I got it. All right, now this one on the other hand does not belong to me, but this one will do 755 feet per second. This thing's got a little bit more kick than that little daisy. Cool. Well, this little thing is uh, it's pretty accurate up close. It, it varies a little bit at, you know, when I got out there to 50, 60 feet, but uh, it's a fun little thing to plink around with. It. I got another one which I'm going to show you guys soon. That thing's pretty awesome. I got to get it zoned in or uh, sighted in, anyways. So, anyways, I'm going to continue having some fun here. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, put them down in the comment box below. I'll catch you guys next time.